Hey everyone, Edward here, and hope everyone's doing well and staying safe these days. So I want to actually do a little video here, and uh, believe it or not, I actually got my hands on a Surface Pro 7 Plus. This is actually a device I've actually been trying to hunt down for some time, but as many of you may know, this product is not really a retail device. It's really geared more for corporate environments like businesses and whatnot, for mass deployment and all that jazz. So this particular device uh, probably won't really be available if you ever walk into a Microsoft store or just go to the browser site. I have noticed it is uh, available to some degree, but unlike like the Surface Pro 8, the Go 3, or even the Sur Surface Pro 7 beforehand, you don't actually see all the models available. So you can actually only see, I, I believe if I saw correctly, only the eight gigabyte model, and this is actually a 16 gigabyte model, uh, Core i7 model. And uh, the only one I actually saw available was a Core i5 8 gigabyte model. And uh, that's even if, if it's even in stock. So definitely uh, a little hard to get your hands on. Um, I had to scour online sites and whatnot. Even Amazon um, did not even have it available unless it was like a really top model. And I actually really scored this one for a really good deal on an online retailer site. So I really do appreciate the seller who actually sold this to me. And uh, even though it was described as uh, used or maybe just uh, out of the open box item, this device is pretty much as brand new as it could possibly get. So this is not really your unboxing video that I always like to do, but I want to actually show the box that it actually came in. And if I open it up, you can actually see here, a little label, kind of would uh, kind of uh, basically substitute for a box. And you can actually see their Surface Pro 7. And of course, everything fell apart a little bit, but you actually do see the charger and of course the little instruction manual in here. Let me just go ahead and open that just so you take a peek. And of course, there you go. It looks like this stuff has never actually been opened before. So either this device was arm made at some point, so then this is actually a refurbished or maybe even a brand new one, who knows? Or this is just basically uh, the packaging, the corporate packaging for this particular device. As I mentioned, the Surface Pro 7 Plus is really geared for more corporate environments. So I've actually been used to, in a, another workplace in my, I've actually been used to opening um, several of uh, Go tablets in this case um, back then um, that were actually for corporate use and they actually came in brown boxes like that as opposed to the retail packaging. Before I go ahead and turn it on, let's go ahead and take a look around the device. This is actually the matte black color. So I'm told that fingerprints can sometimes get on here. But, you know, I don't really seem to be picking up too many fingerprints so much. So go ahead and show you here. On the top, you do actually see the power button and, of course, the volume up and down bar on the upper left side. The Surface Pro 8 models have now moved those buttons to the side, the left and the right side. Everything else is there. On the left side, we do have only this little lonely headphone jack right over here. And on the other side, we do have two USB ports. One, I'm going to go ahead and try to focus in on that. Sorry about that try to put this down and uh, you can actually see here on the side you do have a USB type A and a USB type C port very similar to uh, the Surface Pro 7 actually pretty much the same looking around the tablet as well too one to actually point out two little very important differences and I'll go ahead and just give you the good the good look over the usual one and one big difference that really does pop out here is of course the removable SSD in this little uh, uh, back door or trap door, I guess you can kind of call it, kind of like laptops have. And that's something, actually something very similar to the Surface Pro X and also the Surface Pro 8 offers. Big plus there. But additionally, you also do have the memory card, uh, the SD, little micro SD slot right over here if you want to actually use it. There is actually a model of the Surface Pro 7 Plus that's also LTE of it, um, compatible, so you can actually put in a little SIM card in there. And yes, I'm going to try to get my hands on one of those as well too and see how that device works when you're actually using it on a cellular network as well too. So let's go ahead and turn this on. I have been using it uh, for quite a bit, for about a day, um, to some degree on and off, just checking email, sending it up. This device originally did come with Windows 11, and that might have been actually the seller just upgrading it as a favor. But I did go ahead and install Windows 10 just because I'm just more used to that particular operating system at this time. And you can see it actually didn't even take about five or six minutes from boot time for the entire device to actually boot up here. A couple of more differences between the Surface Pro 7 and the Surface Pro 7 Plus is obviously a little bit on the hardware side as well too. And one big thing is the CPU here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up and just bring up the, right over here, Task Manager. 
and you'll see that it is using an 11th generation Core i7 CPU. The Service Pro 7 that I reviewed previously, you can definitely go ahead and check out that, review, that video review. I'll put the link in the description below. That was actually using a 10th generation. So Surface Pro 7 is available with 10th generation Intel CPU options. And one big plus for this, um, the Surface Pro 7 Plus is of course 11th generation, pretty much matching what the Surface Pro 8 actually has. So much newer CPU, this is actually running at base speed of 2.8 gigahertz. You can definitely see it does throttle down or throttle up. I have seen it even hit close to four gigahertz for just a moment at some point. And obviously being an i7 model, you'll actually see here the little fan up here on the upper left, just above the little buttons here on the little vent holes, if, uh, if needs be. Another great characteristic of the Surface Pro 7 is obviously battery life. Battery life definitely improved to some degree over the Surface Pro 7. I believe that was actually one big rant I did actually see online that the Surface Pro 7 battery is just uh, degraded a little bit in terms of uh, how long it's gonna last you and time when it comes compared to other previous Pro generations. So it seems like uh, Surface Pro 7 Plus kind of picked up on that and gave you uh, even longer battery life. Now I have been using this uh, every now and then for about a day now, it's down to 92%. I did go ahead and set up Outlook and I left Outlook running so I can basically sync two email addresses that I currently have it installed with and set up on. And it seems like uh, since I unplugged it, it just rarely went down. So I mean, I actually did leave this on overnight in sleep mode, you know, just hitting the power button, letting it go to sleep mode and turning it back on in the morning. So here we are. And you'll definitely see the battery life is still above 90%. I actually find that pretty impressive. My Surface Pro 7 perhaps may have actually hit already like 85 to 88%, give or take. And I'll definitely do a follow-up video comparing both devices as well. So a little bit in terms of performance, let me go ahead and just open up a couple of programs here. Maybe open up Word, Excel, Firefox, and go ahead and click on that. Excel here, maybe even Adobe Acrobat. And I'll open up Malwarebytes as well too. So you'll see already CPU spiking up a little bit. Um, the this, this speed maybe bouncing between like 1.3, 1.5 gigahertz as well. I do notice when you have this device powered, uh, plugged in and powered up, it starts to actually pass, go past um, two gigahertz over here. You might need to register, Adobe. And uh, you'll see that currently a memory is only at about 27%. This is actually a 16 gig model. Another little thing I want to mention in regards to uh, processor options and, and memory options, you can actually purchase this device off the Microsoft site. However, as I mentioned, um, being that this is more geared for uh, basically corporate world as opposed to retail, you really only find one model, and I've actually only seen this, so of course someone correct me if uh, this has actually changed recently, but for the last several weeks, I've actually only noticed the, I the Core i5 version with eight gigabytes that comes bundled with a uh, touch type keyboard as well too, not even one of the Alcantara, so you really can't choose which one you want. And um, so unfortunately you do not see Core i7 options or even the 16 gig options or even higher SSD options as well too, leading up to one terabyte. And if you switch over to looking for the Microsoft Store for corporate customers, then you'll start to see options like this. So as I said, this uh, tablet is actually a little tough to find and I'm really glad I was able to find one here in pretty much spanking brand new condition. Even the AC adapter that I was actually in the brown box I mentioned earlier, doesn't even look like it was ever even used. Probably used just to make sure it was te you know, tested out and it works okay, but never actually used. So you can see all these programs open up pretty much without a hitch, pretty quick too. I'll go ahead and close them out here. Another little thing here, I'm gonna do a little bit of a video test in just a moment. I'm playing some uh, 1440, and even 4K videos to see how it runs. Another little thing I did notice is the speakers appear to be a slightly better quality. One big thing I really enjoyed about the Surface Pro 8, and you can definitely check out my review. I'll put a link in the description below. One thing I really did enjoy about that is the speakers are actually pretty big upgrade over the Surface Pro 7. And I have noticed some good quality improvement on these speakers as well too. And I'll definitely go ahead and uh, let you hear that for yourself in just a moment. So here we are playing the video actually in 4K. I'm going ahead and uh, demonstrate here that here for you. I'm having a little bit of a buffer issue here just because uh, you know, obviously 4K videos are a little bit goofy. Well, actually, I just accidentally moved from one area to another. So you can actually see here it's running at 4K. And uh, let me go ahead and bring that up to full screen here. Still running. 
pretty well. And let me go ahead and just demonstrate to you how it looks in other resolutions as well too. So that was one little issue I was actually having on the Surface Pro 7, that even running an ideal performance and whatnot on a video like this, it begins to, well, I mean, obviously I may run into a little bit of a buffering issue from time to time, but it was actually skipping a little bit. And uh, that's basically, I believe, uh, due to the uh, CPU to some degree. Could have even been some other um, things going on there as well too, but now I'm not gonna actually be watching 4K videos off YouTube um, using this particular device, but to actually know that I can actually handle it should be uh, pretty clear. I did actually see this when originally testing it out. It did actually skip at one point, but then caught up again. It really just depends on what you're actually viewing. This is actually a 4K video, really uh, high bit rate uh, quality, so to speak. You can actually see that in the picture here. And I did notice when uh, facing uh, the sun and everything, it just kind of goofs off a little bit at one point, but it didn't seem like it did that at all here. Of course, I accidentally skipped ahead here. Some YouTube controls on these browsers have uh, just really changed over time, and, and it's kind of sometimes it's a little strange. I even hinted, hinted up that little button that just lowers it down to the window on the bottom uh, right corner. But you can actually see here 1440 and 4K, uh, 4K playback running pretty well. And um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, do something uh, silly like open up Word and um, maybe even open up Excel as well too. Seems like it's running pretty well. Open up another Firefox tab, keyboard comes up and the, I can already feel on the top, um, the little fan on the upper left portion here, just like the Surface Pro 7 has, is uh, basically turned on just to keep the device a little cooler. So. Might actually run into some issue with throttle, throttling at some point if the device starts getting too warm, but it looks like it's running a-okay here. Let me go ahead and just bring it up to 4K one more time. Of course, doing a little bit of a buffering there, but it seems like it's running a-okay. I previously did a review on the Surface Pro Signature Type keyboard right over here. This is the Alcantara keyboard in ice blue color, even though a lot of people will say it looks gray. I actually said it almost matches uh, my Manduka yoga mat. And of course you can actually use this with the Surface Pro 7. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it now. And very easy, and of course it's already working. I also have my little uh, Surface Pro mouse plugged in. I don't actually have it with me at the moment, uh, but. Very easy, once you actually turn the device on, hit that little button underneath, it actually quick, asks you for permission to quick sync to it and you are pretty much ready to go. So definitely, uh, if you do have a Surface Pro 7 or a previous generation Surface Pro device, such as a 6 or a 5, and you have a keyboard for it, just uh, feel free to know that it will definitely work on your Surface Pro 7 Plus. So this does not work on the newer generations, such as the Surface Pro X or the Surface Pro 8. So just something to keep in mind, this keyboard is definitely going to be um, just basically older, considered older generation, but still works. And since this device is still being sold to some degree by Microsoft, these keyboards are still around for the most part. So if you need one, go ahead and get one very, very soon. So I got Crystal Disk Mark here up here, so I can actually go ahead and do a little bit of a benchmark on the uh, SSD that actually came with this particular tablet. So remember again, that you can actually go ahead and change the SSD. So this is actually the, benchmark of the actual SSD already included on this particular device, just to give you an idea of what it came with. But it's pretty interesting to know and a very good feature to actually have to be able to change the SSD on this particular device and upgrade it to a one terabyte if you wanted to without actually having to rip the device apart. Um, well, actually, even on the Surface Pro 7, I believe the SSD is built in. So 
you can actually change that out. So just something to keep in mind. Really good plus with the Surface Pro 7 Plus. And of course, future uh, generations of this device, such as the Surface Pro 8. We're getting about 2,000 megabytes a second read, which is uh, almost on par with the Pro 7. I believe it was around 2,100, 2,200 uh, megabytes a second. Now, I'm going to probably take a wild guess that the speed, the write speed, is going to be pretty much similar to the Surface Pro 8, probably around 1,000 or just a tad bit less, which is, you know, technically a little bit by the numbers, a little bit slower than what the Surface Pro 7 has in terms of write speed, and um, may not be a deal killer whatsoever since obviously these SSDs are really fast. But if for any reason on this particular device or on the Surface Pro 8 you do not like, the slightly lower uh, write speed. Go ahead and just uh, remove the SSD in there on that little trap door there and just go ahead and install your own. So it looks like what well, this right looks like just hovering just a little under a gigabyte a second in terms of uh, write speed. Still really awesome speed, basically 2K read, 1K write for the most part. And I'm actually really impressed with this uh, device so far. And just as this benchmark is actually finishing up, I'm going to go ahead and just bring up the Surface uh, app that usually comes pre-installed. I actually have to install this myself since I reinstalled um, Windows 10. You can actually see the device is actually working pretty well. It does recognize it. Um, this device is actually still under warranty, so I speak for another 10 or so months. So Surface Pro 7, still a new release to the most degree. Even matches my keyboard color. Since I mentioned it so many times, here it is, the Surface Pro 7 side by side with the Surface Pro 7 Plus. Both of them actually look completely identical. Just a little color thing going on here. This is actually your platinum silver color. This one's your black color here, the matte black. And uh, both devices, same resolution, same screen size. Obviously both of them function very similar. This is actually the um, i7, uh, Core i7 version with 16 gigs of RAM. Pretty much matching this one, except obviously this is the 11th generation Core i7. This is your 10th generation Core i7. Let me go ahead and bring up Task Manager on both of them, just to demonstrate that here, here for you. And uh, I will go ahead and do a comparison video very shortly for both of them, because I actually do want to go ahead and cover a few little things here. You can actually see here, this is the, uh, let me go ahead and bring up the brightness just a tad bit. There we go. The screen actually feels a little brighter for some reason. Core i7, 1065G7, and over here, Core i7, 1165G7 at 2.8 gigahertz. This one's at 1.3 gigahertz. I'm pretty sure that's a base speed, but as you can see, it does actually surpass that gigahertz speed here. Oh, so both devices definitely uh, running really well. Looks like the battery life on this one is about, let's go ahead, around 93%. After watching all those videos and whatnot, I did actually have this plugged in, so I went ahead and charged it up to a little bit higher. So I definitely will actually do a side-by-side -side review in terms of battery life and some other little features as well too. If there's any particular thing you want me to look into in the comparison on both of them, let me know in the comments below. And I'll definitely go ahead and toss in uh, that particular commentary and feature, uh, basically review when it comes to comparing both of them. So I mean, both of them are pretty much the same, just a CPU uh, change, the option to be able to upgrade the SSD. And of course, uh, some other little options here that I don't have on these tablets is the LTE uh, capability, which I'm hoping to get my hands on um, one Surface Pro 7 Plus. Maybe not an i7, maybe an i5 with similar features and see how that runs really well. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that video. Definitely shoot a like and subscribe, support the channel if you'd like. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. This wonderful device here, I'll definitely be doing a little bit more follow up and uh, we'll definitely be doing a follow up review as well too, possibly one or two of them comparing with the original Surface Pro 7. And of course, uh, after a couple of days or weeks even, see how this device is actually serving my purposes and needs and basically using it as an everyday companion, checking my mail, going on Firefox, even using it uh, to actually look at YouTube comments and whatnot. I actually have responded to a lot of YouTube comments using my Surface Pro 7, so now I'll be using this device as well too. So if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Thanks again for watching everyone. As always, stay safe. Take care.